Hi, it's Alaska Granny. I'm lucky enough to be spending some time in the lower 48. I get to spend time with my daughter's family and enjoy my grandchildren. Something that's important to me is always being able to provide for the future. And I especially am concerned that my family has the things they need should an emergency arise. And so one of the priorities that I did while I was here visiting was help them make a secret pantry. We cleared out a little spot in one of the closets. It was simple to do. You just need to declutter some of the things that you don't need and aren't using. And then you can create a space to stockpile some of the prepping supplies, some of the food, the things that you would really rely on that you really need in case something happens. We never know what can happen from day to day. All we need to do is look over the last few years to realize that emergencies can happen to all of us. We had the pandemic, we've had forest fires, we've had earthquakes, we've had terrible storms, hurricanes, freezing pipes. There's all kinds of things that have happened to people that can make it so that you need to have things to rely on to be able to take care of yourself. Let me show you the things that we put together in our secret pantry in this little portion of this closet so that we have enough things going forward for my daughter's family in case there's an emergency. Plus, if I'm here, I wanna know that I have enough things too. So let's go ahead and take a peek. It's just on one side of the closet and it's just a little closet, but there's still plenty of room. And we did it from the very top to the very bottom and there's all kinds of extra supplies in here. You just need to be strategic, think about all the different categories and then find items that fit the categories of the supplies that you want. Make it fit your needs. Don't just take someone else's list. Stockpile the things that you commonly use and want to have on hand. So let's go from top to bottom and I'll show you the supplies that we put in this little secret pantry space. One of the tools I have in my arsenal of prepping supplies is this spotlight from Cabela's and it just has a trigger pull and it has a very bright, a dim, a red, and it's off. And you can see that it's very handy and I'm going to use this to spotlight onto the shelves and show you what we have. Look up here in the very top. There's extra rolls of toilet paper. There's boxes of Kleenex and those are all going to be handy and they're lightweight. So it's a type of item to put on a very high shelf. You don't want to put something like water, which could leak and is very heavy because it could collapse the shelves or leak. And so think about strategies of the lightest things go at the top and the heavy things at the bottom. Then there are some supplies of Ziploc bags. And they come in the freezer quarts, which are the size she uses most frequently. Then there are some sandwich bags and some of the snack size bags. So find the sizes that you like. I also like the quart size. And sometimes at the Dollar Tree, you can find the super jumbo that are like two gallons. And I like to use those. Then if you remember even one year ago, it was nearly impossible to find medicines in the winter time when cold and flu season was here. If you have small children, maybe you remember the struggle to have the remedies that you needed for your little ones. Since then, we've been keeping a stockpile of remedies and medicines for the little ones. And one of the strategies that I do is store the children's remedies away from adult remedies so in an emergency you don't accidentally mix it up and give them an adult dose. So next below that we got a nice metal rack that fits in here nicely and it allows you to store all kinds of things in a small space and it fits in here nicely because you can still store your extra hangers. There's plenty of room for those. So let's zoom in on each shelf and see what we have. On the top shelf, there's a plastic bin. Let me move these out of the way. And I have some of the Bob Red Mill soup mixes. These are very good. These will last longer if you put them into a jar, but so far they're still in the bag. These are delicious. They're nutritious. They're very well made, natural. They're high fiber, non-GMO. There's two different varieties in here. Sadly, Bob from Bob's Red Mill recently passed away. So condolences to the Bob's Red Mill family that live in Oregon. Then there are packages of one pound bags of different kind of beans, pinto beans, black beans, white beans, lentils. There's all different varieties. You can pick them up a pound at a time. And then when you have a chance, repackage them into a jar with a tight fitting lid. Or if you have a lot of them, you can put them into a Mylar bag with an oxygen absorber. Store that Mylar bag 
into a five gallon bucket with a tight fitting lid and then you'll have lots of food put away that can last a long, long time. These are okay on the shelf temporarily, but it's much better if you store them into an airtight container. But for now, this will work. And you can see there's still lots of room. You can keep adding as you pick up a package or two at a time. You can keep adding and then rotate these foods. Look at all the spices. Whatever the spices are you like, pick them up. I like to buy them in a small container because they're going to stay fresher. Once you open them, then the air is getting to them. I don't use so many that I would want a giant container that when I open it, it would take years to use it up. So I can come and find these and get whatever size, whichever kind I want in a size that's easy to rotate. There's a few other little items back here. There are some plug-in refills and the dust off compressed gas. Those fit nicely right behind there and uh, it's all staying nicely on this shelf. Let's look at the next row. The next row has some canned foods. Get a variety. I have vegetables, chili, sweet potatoes, mixed vegetables. There's beef stew, garbanzo beans, enchilada sauce, mangoes, baked beans, there's all kinds of different things in here. Fill up the kinds of foods that you would commonly use. Then there are some packages of peaches, some packages of applesauce. Behind those there's a big bag of organic hemp. My daughter uses that. I'm not exactly sure why but that's what she uses so she should have it. Then there's a 12 pack of the macaroni and cheese Easy Mac in cups. Now I learned the hard way that if you don't look and make sure they have a cup, you can buy them without a cup, but I took some without a cup on a trip and then I didn't have a way to cook it because it didn't come with the little uh, cup. So I had quite a problem trying to make it into a little disposable cup while I was away on a holiday. So make sure that you have the things you need so that you can actually prepare the food that you want. The next row has some uh, protein. It has some albacore tuna, some chicken a la king, some cans of chicken, and a jar of peanut butter. My kids love the Jif. I like to store them standing on their heads so that the oil doesn't separate all to the top. So that has helped. There's a few packages of spaghetti. There's some other noodles back here in the back. Chickpea rotini, protein penne, and if you look at these, these are of course, they're plant protein, but they also contain a high level of protein. The uh, chickpea rotini has 12 grams of protein per serving, and the protein penne has 10 grams of protein per serving. Whereas a regular box of pasta is going to include 7 grams of protein per serving. Then I have some varieties of pasta sauces. There's some Bertoli. There's some Hunts. What's this one back here? Here's another one. So different varieties give you different flavors. Okay. This pasta doesn't want to stay on the shelf. It's falling behind. So I guess you could put a cardboard or something on the shelf if there's room behind it to keep things from falling back. Then I have some Arborio rice. There's some regular white rice in a jar. <laughs> that fell again. And then some chicken a la king, a couple of cans of that, because that's easy to serve that over rice. I can't forget my teddy. Here's a few moist and meaty burger with cheddar cheese flavored pouches of dog food that's here for an emergency. I have some almond milk. These are the shelf stable milks that can live in your pantry for a year or two unopened and once you open them then you need to keep them in the refrigerator. So you can find these even at Dollar Tree and you can find whole milk, 2%, 1% almond milk, I've even seen oat milk. And then behind that is some regular boxes of the Kraft macaroni and cheese. My kids love that and so having it in different varieties uh, works good for my family. If we keep going down, there are three big boxes of oatmeal. And look at these. I have two craft kits. Sometimes if an emergency comes around, boy, it would be nice to have some little craft set or something to entertain the kids if, say, the power went off or 
for some reason you need something to entertain them, having a kit you can pull out is a great idea. Then there are some more of the peaches, lots of peaches, or some dish soap, some Myers hand soap refill, a couple of spray cleaners, and then there's a little pump sprayer over there for the hand soap. And I always keep a few uh, paper bags just to load things up if you need to take them somewhere, or even to use for garbage. Tucked away here in the side, I have some Go-Go Squeeze yogurt. If you haven't tried these, these are shelf-stable yogurt. They come in blueberry and berry. They just are the little packets that you twist off the top, squeeze out the yogurt. They're so handy and you do not have to keep them in the refrigerator. So I have one, two, three, four, five boxes of these because my little kids could eat these every day or more than one time a day. And so having emergency type foods that they could open and eat is important to me. I also have some of the go-go squeeze fruit. There's 10 apple apple, five apple mango, five apple banana, and you can also just hand them to a kid, twist off the top, and they can enjoy that. And that's even easier than opening up, say, a pack of fruit, peaches, or applesauce. I have a variety pack of snacking nuts. There's 30 packs of nuts. Individual packets of nuts are a great way to grab a snack if you're on the way out the door and you just need something to eat. Take something along. You can take a pack of nuts. You can take a yogurt. You can take a fruit pouch. Then you won't be tempted with a drive through dining. You can have a package of nuts. You can have some squeezy fruit. You can have yogurt even. Refill a bottle of water and take it with you and then you can have the foods you need so that you have something to eat and you can stretch your dollars. Instead of spending $20 on a Big Mac, you can spend $20 on adding more food into your food storage stockpile. It's all about choices. We have limited resources. We want to make sure that we have the things we need. And so setting some aside is very important. So that's the supplies I have from top to bottom. You can see there's a lot of variety and there are things that they are willing to eat that are easy to just open and eat or easy to prepare. And there are actual meal ideas, things you can combine to put together in to make a meal if you needed to. Look around your house. Maybe you can find some nooks and crannies, places that you can get rid of things you don't need and add in some things you do need so that you can continue to build up your stockpile so you'll have the things that you need going forward. Nobody knows what's coming, but we do know that we all face challenges from time to time in our lives. So the better prepared we are, I consider it lifestyle insurance so that I can continue to live the life that I want because I have the things that I need. Leave it in the comments below. What are the food items or supplies that you would want to have in your secret pantry? And uh, it can give us ideas to help us decide other ideas of things that we might want to stockpile too. I hope you'll like my video. Share it with someone else you think might enjoy it. Please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel.